We praise the Lord, everybody. We thank God for everybody coming on for prayer and Bible study. We we'll thank God for Minister Anisha, Minister Juwan. Thank God for Sister Carolyn Wilson. Uh, thank God for Deacon Lee, Deaconess Brenda, being a part of the uh, prayer and Bible study. Thank God for Sister Jacqueline Mason, Sister Diane James, and Elder Sheila Jackson. We thank God for you all, you all coming on, being a part, uh, being partakers of what God has in store for us tonight and how God is going to bless us. And I'm excited about the goodness of the Lord and I'm excited about what God is doing uh, for his people. Thank God for Shwana Covington being a part of the ministry tonight. Thank God for you. And we're going to give a few, just a few more minutes for a few more uh, uh, to come on the broadcast. Uh, thank God for Ellie Lane Bonaparte being with us tonight. Thank God for you. We're going to just give a few more minutes before we go into prayer. Thank God for Brother David San Juan Johnson being with us tonight. God bless you, uh, my friend. We thank God for all of you uh, that have assembled today. today. Uh, before we go into prayer, don't forget we are going tonight. We'll be back in Genesis, the 19th chapter. We'll be back in Genesis, the 19th chapter. So if you want to get your Bibles and be prepared uh, for the lesson tonight, you can. We'll be in Genesis, the 19th uh, chapter, Genesis 19, and um, somewhere around. We're probably going to pick it up around Genesis 14 or Genesis 15. Thank God for Jasmine Moody Morrison. Uh, coming on the broadcast, we thank God for you. Uh, we're going to give it about two or three more minutes before we actually go into prayer. We're going to give our people a few more minutes to come and be assembled uh, for the broadcast. We, um, I would think I want to do roll call. Let's bless our leader tonight. Thank God for Brother Josh, Minister Joshua Montrell Fleetwood being a part of the prayer tonight. Thank God for Latoya King Lagan uh, joining us tonight. We thank God for you. We bless God for all our leaders. Let's first of all start with our leader. Let's bless God for Pastor George Fleetwood. Come on. Let's bless God for her tonight. We honor her tonight. We thank God for the elders, Ellie Lane Bonaparte, Ellie Sheila Jackson. We thank God for all the ministers, Minister Juwan, Minister Joshua, Minister Anisha Fleetwood. We thank God for Minister Brad Bristow, Minister Avery Lagan. We thank God for Minister Cherie Eli. We thank God for, God bless you, Minister Brad. We thank God for, uh, we thank God for Sister Jacqueline Mason, Sister Jamaica Hemingway. We thank God for Brother Brandon Morris and Sister Jasmine Morrison. We thank God for everyone, everyone, especially those that are in leadership. We just wanted to do a roll call, and we thank God for all of you that are part of leadership. Listen, before we go into Bible study tonight, we're going to go in, and we're going to have a word of prayer. I thank God for all of you that was a part of the prayer this morning. I'm telling you, God God really uh, took over the prayer this morning. The Holy Ghost really interceded. Thank God for my sister-in-law, Sister Jennifer, being a part of us tonight. Thank God, all the way from Georgia, thank God for Mel Dean Jones being a part of the uh, prayer and Bible study tonight. Listen, we're getting ready to go into prayer. We thank God for all of you. Uh, we're going to give about another minute. Thank God for you, Brother Brandon Morrison. Hallelujah to God. Yes, we're going to get ready to go. Thank God for Sister Ruby Jones. Sister Ruby, we're still praying for you, and we're still praying for your family. And so we just want to thank God. Uh, thank God for you and your family. We're getting ready to go into prayer. Everybody, if you would just bow your heads, Father. 
We come to you, God, with, with meekness, and we come to you with humility, and we come to you with praise, honor, and glory, and we come to bless your name, and we come to lift up your name, and we come to just to tell you thank you and let you know how much we appreciate you and and that we come to just lift you up and to give you glory and we come to worship you and to honor you and to, oh God, just tell you how much you are to us and what you mean to us, God. Father, we love you today. We appreciate you today. Father, we lift you up today. And Father, I want you to know, God, that we belong to you. Father, we understand, God, that our God, our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in us, God. And we are have of God, and we are not our own. We understand that we have been bought with a price, and therefore we glorify you in our bodies and in our spirit. And they belong unto you, God. We are not our own now. And so, therefore, we give you glory, and we give you honor, and we praise your name, God. Help us, God, to honor you, God. Let this be a prayer of honor. Help us, God, to honor you with all our substance and with the first fruit of all our increase, God. Father, we just want to honor you. Everything that you have allowed us to have and allow us to accumulate, God, we give it all back to you, God. We want to honor you, God, with all the substance, God. And the substance is not even ours. It belongs unto you, God. But, Father, as a good steward, God, you loan them unto us, God. But, Father, we want to honor you, God, with the substance. And with the first fruit of all our increase, we want to honor you, God. You said that our bonds will be Filled with plenty, God. And you said that our presses would burst out with new wine. Father, we bless your name, God. And we give you praise, God. Help us, God. Despise not, God. Hallelujah to God. Your blessings and the things that you have done for us and the things that you're yet doing for us, God. Hallelujah to God. Help us, oh God. For you said in your word, God, that them that honor me will I honor. And you said, they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Help us, O oh God, to honor you, God. Father, we honor you, God. And Father, as we honor you, you said you would honor us, God. Father, we want to honor you tonight by giving you our praise and giving you our worship and coming to you with glory and with honor, God. Father, we bless you. Hallelujah to God. Father, we honor you, God. We honor you tonight, God. Help us, God, to love you uh, with all our heart. Father, we love you with all our heart, uh, with all our soul, and with all our might, God. Help us just to love you, God. Help us, God, to love you, God. Hallelujah to God. Help us, God. Uh, Father, you said these words which you command us shall be in our heart and help us, God, to love you so much that we teach them diligently unto our children. They should talk of them when they sit in the house and when they walk by the way and when they lie down and when they rise up, God. Hallelujah to God. Let your word, God, be prevalent. Let your word, God. Hallelujah to God be, hallelujah to God, a source of strength and a source of inspiration in our houses, God, as we speak the word of the Lord and the mind of the Lord to our children, God. Father, I praise your name, God. Help us, God, to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly in all wisdom and teach it and admonish it one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. Father, help us, God, that whatsoever we do in word or in deed, to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give him thanks to God and the Father by him. Father, we give your name praise, and we give your name glory. Hallelujah to God. 
Oh God, we praise your name. Father, remember Sister Ruby, God. Continue to bless her house and bless her family, God, and bless her loved ones, God. Father, you promised to comfort those that are cast down, Lord. Comfort their family tonight, God. Give them, God, sin comforting mercy, God. Father, I praise your name, God. You said in your word, if it seem evil unto us to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom are you going to serve, God. Help us, God, to have an attitude like Joshua has for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Let that God be our mantra. Let that God be God. Uh, let that be God within our hearts and within our minds, God, that we will serve the Lord. Uh, Father, I give your name praise and uh, I give your name glory. Father, you said in your word, God, whosoever offer praise glorify me. Uh, Father, we come offering praise, God. And we're praising you to glorify you, God. We praise you. We offer praise. So we glorify you, God. Hallelujah to God. Father, we offer praise. Father, so therefore, we glorify you by offering praise, God. Help us, God. Father, your word said, I've refined thee, but not with silver. I've chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it. You said, I will not give my glory unto another. Help us, God, not to mess with your glory. You said you won't give your glory to graven images, God. Help us, God, to know, God, no matter how hard we sing, or how hard we preach, God, or how anointed we are. Help us to know, God, that, hallelujah, we'll never get your glory. Help us, God, not to have aspirations, God, uh, to receive your glory. Father, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your glory, you won't give to another. Father, we give you back glory. Father, as man tried to give us glory. Father, we know how to receive honor. But as man tried to give us glory, we'll take the glory and give it back to you, God. Father, the same way Peter gave the glory back to you, God. The same way Peter, God, hallelujah, that God told Cornelius, get up, I'm nothing but a man. Help us to realize who we are, God. No matter how anointed we are, no matter, God, how great we are and how people say how great we are, God, and no matter what we accomplish, God, help us to realize, God, that we are not worthy of worship. Father, we receive honor. But Father, hallelujah, we don't mess with your glory. We don't mess, God. We don't receive worship, God. Hallelujah to God. Help us to be still and know that you are God. Father, I thank you. We exalt you among the heathen, God. And you will be exalted in the earth, God. Hallelujah. Help us to be still and know that you are God. Help us, God, to not move so fast, but to be still and to be calm, God, and to come to a place of stillness, God, and know that you are God. Father, I thank you, for you will be exalted among the heathen. You will be exalted in the earth. Father, we give glory to your name. We exalt you right now in the earth. We exalt you right now amongst the heathen, God. Hallelujah to God. We exalt you, God. Hallelujah to God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The earth is full of his glory. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth uh, is full of your glory. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. 
Hallelujah to God. Father, we thank you, God. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, God. Let thy glory be above all the earth, God. Be thou exalted, God, above the heavens. Let your glory, God, hallelujah to God. Let thy glory be above all the earth, God. Father, we praise you. We give you glory. Be thou exalted. Hallelujah to God. Father, you said, God, hallelujah to God, for we see our calling. How not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, no many noble are called. But Father, you've called the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. You've chosen the weak things of the world to confound those that are mighty, the base things of the world. Hallelujah to God and those which are despised have you chosen and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. And Father, your purpose and your will for this is that no flesh shall glory in your presence. Father, we don't glory in your presence, God, because we realize, God, it is you, God, that brought us from a mighty long way. It is you, God, that brought us, God. It is you, God, that brought us, God, out of Pharaoh's house. It is you, God, that brought us, God, out of the house of bondage. It is you, God, that brought us this far, God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Father, we praise your name. And Father, when we look back and see where you brought us from, God, Father, we don't glory. We don't glory in your presence, God. Hallelujah to God. Father, it is you that have made us unto wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, God. And you said, he that glory, let him glory in the Lord. Father, we don't glory. No flesh is going to glory in your presence. Because, Father, our glory is we glory in the Lord. Our glory is if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. We never would have been delivered. We never would have came out. We never would have been exalted. We never would have been lifted up. We never, God, hallelujah, would have received the honor that we receive now if it had not been for the Lord. Father, we don't glory in our God accomplishments. We don't glory, God, in our little titles. We don't glory in the things that we have attained, God. But, Father, in the things, God, that we, hallelujah, have accomplished. But our glory in is in the Lord. Father, we praise your name, God. Father, you said in your word, God. You said, God. Paul said, I planted. Apollo said he watered, but it was God that gave the increase. Father, we can plant all day, we can water all day, but we need you to give increase. You said, neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that water, but God giveth the increase. Father, we realize, God, when we compare ourselves to you, when we get on the scale and comparison to you, Father, hallelujah to God, we, hallelujah to God, are anything, God, you said we're anything, we're not anything, God, but Father, with you, with you, we can do all things, with you, we are more than conquerors, with you, God, we are praise in the earth, God, with you, God, we can do exploits through our God, Father, I praise you, but without you, we are not nothing. Hiya, God, I praise you. Father, I acknowledge our nothingness today, God. We're nothing without you, God. Father, we're not afraid to admit it. We're not afraid to, to shout it from the housetop. We're not afraid, God, to shout it on Facebook that we are nothing without you. Hallelujah to God. Handabashia. God, I praise your name, God. I give your name glory. 
Father, I give your name honor and I give your name praise. Hallelujah. Somebody just glorify the Lord. Come on, get up off that couch and glorify the Lord. Somebody wake up and glorify the Lord. Somebody put that food, put that spoon down and glorify the Lord for a few minutes. Come on, put that fork down and just give God praise, man. Go ahead and chew up that last bit of, bit of, little bit of food you got in your mouth and start giving God praise because he's worthy of the praise. If it had not been for the Lord, hallelujah to God, you wouldn't have the meal on you that you're eating right now. If it had not been for the goodness of the Lord, stop what you're doing and give God praise for a few minutes. Somebody get up out that bed. Holly, you won't lie, but you have sleep. Get up out, get up off that sofa and give God praise. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Give him praise. Give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Quit being lazy and give him praise. Hallelujah to God. Handabashita. God, I praise your name. God, I glorify your name. I glorify your name. I give your name praise. I give your name glory. I give your name honor. Hallelujah to God. Hey, God, I praise you. God, I bless your name. God, I bless your name. Somebody feel like running in the house. Go ahead and run. Somebody feel like giving God a dance with no music. Uh, go ahead and give God praise right now. Praise him right where you at. Praise him where you at. Ha, uh, Shande Bekunda. God, I praise your name. I praise your name. Hallelujah. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's take a minute and just meditate on the goodness of the Lord. Let's take a minute and just be quiet before the Lord. Just for a minute, let's just meditate on the the goodness of the Lord and then we're going to go straight to the word of the Lord. Give God a hand praise. Come on, somebody just bless the name of the Lord. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. Well, we're getting ready. We've already acknowledged all our leaders. We've already prayed. Now we're going to the word of the Lord. You that have Bibles, turn to Genesis 12. I'm going to pick it up at 12. Now, I know we need to go a little further. But I'm just going to pick it up at verse number 12. We already know that the angels have went to Abraham's house and they told Abraham that Sarah's going to have this child. They already told Abraham about uh, destroying Sodom and Abram, Abraham, hallelujah, really intercedes and go before the throne of God. And believe it or not, we got to go back there again tonight because God showed me something else concerning that. So we got to go back and work that out some more, okay? And so now the angels are at Lot's house. Lot takes the angels in. And listen to me. Angel, and Lot tried to sneak these men in because he knew. I don't believe that he knew they were angels, but he knew they were traveling men. And he knew that they were handsome, well-groomed men. And I truly believe that Lot tried to sneak them in. Hallelujah to God to his house and wanted to sneak him out in the morning because he knew what he was dealing with in Sodom. And so, hallelujah to God, they found out that it was in the house. And so now they're about to beat the door down. 
And so Lot tells them, hey, man, I got daughters here. They've never known a man. Hallelujah to God. But they're not stunned those daughters. They want those men. And they told Lot, basically, they, they talk junk to Lot and told Lot, we get you too. Hallelujah to God. So they mad. And so the angels had to smote them with blindness and, and snatch Lot back in, back into the house. And so let's pick it up at Genesis 12. And the men said unto Lot, has thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters, whatsoever thou has in the city, bring them out of this place. Verse 13, we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord and the Lord sent us on a double mission. We are angels, we are ministers of God and we have a dual mission. The first mission is to display the wrath of God on sinners and to destroy this place. And the second mission is, is to administer mercy through the preservation and the deliverance of the righteous. We come to execute wrath on the, on the children of Sodom and Gomorrah, hallelujah, that are so sinful. And we also come to execute favor by bringing deliverance to your house and not just to you lot, but anything that is connected to you, whether they're righteous or not, whether they are connected to you, hallelujah, whether they're son-in-laws, whether no matter what, what you got, hallelujah, if they're connected to you, we're going to bring them out of this place because the sins are waxing great. There are many sins. They're open and they're daringly committed and they have reached the heavens and calls for immediate punishment and vengeance. God have allowed this behavior to go on for too long. And now, hallelujah, justice is demanding that something be done. Hallelujah. And the angels in their mind, they're trying to ask Lot in a sly way, Lot, how in the world did you get connected to this place? How in the world did you get connected to Sodom? So let's pick it up in verse 14. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Oh, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seems as one that mocked unto his son-in-laws. All right, got a lot of work, got a whole lot of work to do here. Lot's message was simple. Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. We don't have time to wait. We don't have time to play games. I have a word of deliverance uh, because of my relationship with God. We've got to get out of this place of iniquity here because destruction is coming. God is going to destroy this place. Now, I want to submit this to you. I want to submit this to you. The Bible said he spoke unto his sons-in-law which married his daughters. Now, two things here. When it says son-in-law, it means they was betrothed. It could possibly mean that these were lot future son-in-laws which, uh, which were destined to marry his daughters because I'm still, one or two things has happened. Lot either has two other daughters that are already married, or he has two daughters that are still living in his house that have been given in marriage. They have been betrothed, they have been given away, but yet the marriage ceremony has not taken place. Listen, Lot does not call his son-in-laws, son-in-laws, Hallelujah to God. He calls them son-in-laws before. If you do research on it, you'll find out that when they were betrothed, they was already given, the marriage was to take place, that they would already start calling them their son-in-law. Listen, it makes sense. That's why Lot could tell the men, Hallelujah, I, I have daughters here. And their virgin daughters, they had never known a man. Do what you want to with them. He knew. Lot knew. 
that they would not touch those girls because they had already been betrothed. They had already been spoken for. They had already been given to people in the community. They had already been betrothed to people. They were already engaged and the marriage was to take place. So he knew they would not touch his daughters. Hallelujah to God. That makes sense, don't it? Makes sense. Hallelujah to God. So, hallelujah to God, I truly believe that these daughters were still living with him and they had not gone through the official act of the marriage. But now, listen, I'll submit something else to you. It's either that, a lot had two more daughters, one of the two, hallelujah to God, is one of the two. Hallelujah. So when he goes to his son-in-laws, he sees his one that mocks. They laugh him to scorn. Let's go to Luke 17 and 28. I want to show you something. Even today, they laugh at us now when we tell them the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. Prepare to meet God. The Lord is coming. What do they do? They laugh. They eat and drink and rise up to play. They laugh and we sound like we're foolish and we sound like we don't know what we're talking about. And we, we they laugh us to scorn. People sit around the house laughing at the church, dancing and acting like the church and act like they're speaking in tongues. And it's just a big fest and a big laugh fest and it's a just a big fun fest but I'm telling you if you don't get right with God you can be sure that your sins is going to find you out hallelujah to God watch this let's go to Luke 7 and 28 look what it says likewise as it was in the days of Lot during Lot time during the time that the angel came and told Lot you better get everything that's connected to you and you better get out with his son, son-in-law, daughter whatever it is Lot you better get it and you better get out of here look what, look, look what it says likewise it was in the days of Lot what happened in the days of Lot they were eating, they were buffeting, they were banqueting they was eating and they was drinking, they were drinking till they couldn't drink no more, they was eating till they was about to bust they brought, holla, listen, Sodom was a very wealthy place. It was a place of abundance and place of overflowing. And they brought and they brought and they brought. They brought that they didn't have room to put the stuff up that they brought. Not only did they brought the stuff they brought, they went ahead and sold it. They planted and they built. I'm telling you, it was just business as usual. Everything was going fine. The sun was was out, the weather was fine, hallelujah, there was plenty to eat, there was plenty to drink, we had plenty of money to buy, plenty of money to sell, we plant, we build, hallelujah, we just got it going on, got another plant going up, got another house going up, got a vacation house got going up, got a house by the lake going up, we planting, we building, we buying, we selling, we eating and drinking, but it's one thing we're not doing, we're not preparing to meet the Lord. Don't it sound like us today? Sound like us today. We're eating and we're drinking and eating and drinking. We're buying and selling and buying and selling and planning and building. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. But yet we're not preparing to meet our God. He seemed like one that mocked. They laughed them to the scorn. Said, man, this is a normal day. Lot, they eating. Lot, they drinking. Hallelujah to God. I could see in my mind, I could see how Lot, the son-in-laws telling Lot, man, holla, get you a bird off the grill, man. We got a hog over there. Holla, come get you some cue. Hallelujah to God. And Lot is trying to get their attention and say, man, this ain't a time to be eating. This ain't a time to be drinking. This ain't a time to be, buy to be buying. This ain't a time to be selling. This ain't a time to be planting. This ain't a time to be building. But this is a time hard to come on and, and let's get out of the city. For the Lord is going to burn the city down. Hallelujah to God. The rallying cry was prepared to meet the Lord. 
Hallelujah to God, but I'm telling you, they laughed at Lot, man. They thought Lot was a joke. Hallelujah to God. They laughed at their future father-in-law. Man, they thought that thing was so funny. Hallelujah. I can imagine that they, listen, how many of y'all know when something really funny, you share it with somebody else? I could see them calling folks over, laughing and picking at Lot and eating and they continue to eat and they continue to buy they continue to sell and plan and build and, and they didn't pay Lot no attention if anything Lot was a good joke he was the butt of all the jokes oh God I praise you but the Bible said when the morning arose the angels hastened Lot saying arise Take your wife and your two daughters with you here. Let you be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. They came. Listen, whether you know it or not, the angels gave the same word to Lot that Lot gave to his son-in-law. Listen, you better be careful who you're preaching to. Hallelujah to God because that word may come back to you. You telling folk, be encouraged and be lifted up and it is well and the Lord got you and the Lord going to see you through and you telling everybody all these things is coming back to you. Hallelujah. Lot going out telling his son, telling his son-in-law's man up. He comes with a word from God and say up. Get out of this place for the Lord is going to destroy the city. He comes with a word and he comes with a word how that he's not able to digest himself. He comes with the word. Hallelujah. That he doesn't have have flowing in his own spirit. He comes with the word, hallelujah to God, he comes with the word, hallelujah, that he's not acting on himself. He comes with the word from the Lord, hallelujah to God, he, a word that he, hallelujah to God, have not come to full grips and full terms with, and the angels have to come to him and tell Lot up. They said, Lot, arise. In other words, up. Get you out of this place. Take your wife and take your two daughters, which are here. Let you be consumed in the iniquity of the city. They give Lot the same word that he gave to his son-in-laws. Tell your neighbor the same word. Yeah, the same word. Let's look at verse 16. And verse 16 said, And while he lingered, uh, hallelujah to God, while he delayed, while he tarried reluctantly, he was hesitant to leave. Uh, I don't believe, I'm, not, I'm trying to get it together. Why? Uh, I'm telling you what the, 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 the Bible scholar says. He didn't have a full understanding of the doom to come. Uh, somebody else said Lot lingered because because of his possession. Somebody else said Lot lingered because of his status. Uh, somebody else says he, le he lingered because of his accomplishments. He lingered because of his family ties and his family connections. Uh, hallelujah to God. But how all I know is that he lingered. He was reluctant to go how he lingered and the men had to lay hold upon his hand and upon the wife of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters and the Lord being merciful unto him brought him forth and set him without the city. Hallelujah to God. God was merciful to him by allowing the angels to lay hold of him and his family. Hallelujah to God. Lot, there's a lot of times our lingering is our ruin. Hallelujah to God. Lot should have been fleeing for his life, but he's still hankering and toying around with Sodom. Hallelujah to God. Don't, don't let lingering be your ruin. He's lingering around. Hallelujah to God. He almost lost his life lingering. If it had not been for the mercy of God, if it had not been for God being so merciful by allowing angels to lay hold on him.
So he tells him how it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for your life. Look not behind you, neither stay down in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah, God is saying, escape for your life. He tells them to escape for your life. I will allow you to save your life, but Lot, you're going to lose your goods. You're going to lose your possessions. Uh, you're going to lose everything that you work hard for as a punishment for your sin and your folly in choosing to dwell amongst such a wicked people. He tells Lot, escape, preserve your life, deliver yourself. He tells Lot, look not behind you, take away any desire that you have for Sodom, any desire that you had for Gomorrah. He says, stay in all the plains. You can't stay here in this same place. You cannot stay here in this place of convenience. You cannot stay here. He said, but I need you to escape to the mountains uh, lest you would be consumed. But listen, I got to take, take a minute and teach the Bible. Lot's bad choice got him in this position. Let's go back to Genesis 13 and 8. I want to show you something that God showed me. I want to show you something that God showed me. Let's go back. And I want to, I'm going to back all the way up to 13 and 1. I want to show you something. Lot went up out of Egypt. He and his wife, Abraham went up out of Egypt. He and his wife and all they had and Lot with him into the south. Abraham, Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. And he went on his journey from south even to Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai unto the place of the altar which he made there at the first. And Abraham called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. Look at verse 6. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. There was a problem with the land. The land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together for their substance was great so that they could not dwell together. Hallelujah. But look what he said in verse 7. There was a strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. This is where this is where Lot's problem began. And the Canaanites and the Perizzites dwell then in the land. And Abraham, Abram said unto Lot, look what he says unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee and between my herdmen and thy herdmen because we be brethren. And he tells Lot is not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee from me. If thou wilt take the light left hand, I will go to the right. If thou wilt part to the right, I will go to the left. You know something that I just saw here? I just saw here in verse number eight and nine something that's going to mess you up. I just saw here that Abraham and Lot separated. There was a separation between Abraham and Lot. Listen to me good here. They did not separate over land. They did not separate, hallelujah to God, because there was not enough land. They did not separate because the land was not able to bear them that they could not dwell together because their substance were great and they could not dwell together. It was not the land that separated them. What separated them was the strife. He said, look at verse 7. And then, listen, when Abraham goes to Lot and tell Lot we need to separate, he never mentions land. I don't see nothing about land in here. But he tells Lot there's a problem. And the problem is 
with your herdsmen and my herdsmen and they're fighting against one another. The Canaanites and the Perizzites, they see this fight go on. We're setting a bad example in front of the sinners of the land, in front of the heathen of the land. And he said, don't let there be strife, I pray thee, between me and you and between our herdsmen because we be brethren. Has nothing to do with land. It has to do with strife. And this is where Lot's problem began is the separation from Abraham. When he gets separated from Abraham, I'm not saying that he couldn't have been separated. I'm not saying that there shouldn't have been a separation. But what I'm saying is Lot, hallelujah, shouldn't have trusted his eyes. Instead of trusting his eyes, he should have trusted his insight. He should have trusted, hallelujah, the mind of the Lord, the will of the Lord, the plan of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord. But he trusted his natural eye. Abraham asked him, Is not the whole land before thee? Separate yourself, I pray thee, from me. I will. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I'll go to the right. If you depart to the right, I'll go to the left. How? But look at verse 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes. I'm going to give you a revelation. Hallelujah. The same way, the same way that Abraham, hallelujah to God, gained those souls, hallelujah to God. What was the name of the city? What was the name of the place that when Abraham left his father's house, hallelujah, and Haran. Remember, Abraham went to Haran and he gained some souls in Haran. I'm just asking a question. I'm just asking a question uh, that if Lot was to stay where he was at and Abraham went towards Sodom, uh, who knows? Who knows if Abraham could have saved Sodom? <laughs> Woo! Who knows? Abraham, Abram at the time, almost saved Sodom with his prayers. He got God down to shin people. If you find 10, will you save the city? With his prayers. All he was doing was praying and got God down to 10. Now, my question is, if he would have went towards Sodom, I wonder what would have happened. What type of difference, what type of, 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 of a change or, or a difference maker? Hallelujah. Listen, amen, it like the Bible calls him righteous. But I just wonder what would have happened if Abram would have pitched his tent towards Sodom. Would there have been a revival in, in Sodom? Would he have gained souls in Sodom the same way he gained souls in Haran? Lot was in Sodom and didn't bring nobody to God. Could it have been God's will for Abraham to go toward Sodom? I'm, I'm just asking the question. That's all. Just asking the question. It is Bible study. Yes. So Lot lifted up his eyes. He never lifted up the eyes of his spirit, but his natural eyes. And behold, all the plain of Jordan, it was well watered everywhere. It would look like the garden of the Lord. Everything looked good and good. Everything looked good to you and good for you. This was not good for Lot. Oh God, I praise your name. Lot gets in trouble. Hallelujah to God. It was Sodom, but it's separation. Hallelujah. It was not Sodom. It was not over land. Listen, the separation was not over land. Hallelujah. The separation was because of strife. Lot is in trouble because of the separation. And I got news for you. Turn to Genesis 18. Hallelujah to God. Well, let's go to Genesis 14 and 12. And they took Lot, Abraham's 
brother's son who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. Lot got in trouble in the battle of the kings. He got in a mess and Abraham had to go get him out the mess. Sodom has not been good to Lot. Turn to Genesis 18 and 23. I want to show you something. Hallelujah to God. Oh my God, I praise you. God, I praise you. I, I think I'm going to have to close with this. Genesis 18, 23 to 25. And I think I'm going to close with this because it's so good. God told Lot, come on here. Look not behind the tail. Take away any desire that you have for Sodom and Gomorrah. Don't look behind you. Neither stay down nor in the, in the plains. You can't stay here in the same place. That plains of the place of convenience. But escape to the mountain lest you be consumed. God is calling us out of the plains and he's calling us to the mountain. It is at that high place. He's calling us to come to the mountain. It is at that place of inconvenience. It is at that place. It is where the deliverance is at that place of inconvenience. It is at the mountain that God is calling his people to, to come to the mountain and escape and get out of, stay out of the plains. Uh, hallelujah to God. It is in the plains. It is that place of convenience. It is that place of the flesh. It is that place of carnality. It is that same old, same old, same old, same old. But God is calling us to saw all things new. He's calling us to a new place, a new walk, a new desire. Hallelujah. A new groan in our spirits. Uh, he's calling us to the mountain. Uh, his purpose is in the mountain. His will for us is in the mountain. His plan for us is in the mountain car is saying come up to the mountain but how many y'all know come on here it's inconvenient to climb the mountain I'd rather stay in the plains and at that place of convenience but let me tell you something there's no anointing in that place of a vineyard there's no purpose in that place of convenience uh, hallelujah to God you gotta come to the mountain uh, it is at the mountain where God is it is at the mountain where the new anointing it is at the night. It is at the mountain where that new revelation is. That new illumination is. It is at the mountain. He's calling us to the mountain. Tell your neighbor, call to the mountain. Oh, God, he told him, escape to the mountain, let you be consumed. You got to come to the high place. He's calling us to the mountain. Hallelujah to God. Listen, Lot's bad choice is coming back to get him. His herdsman is his downfall. Hallelujah to God. And now, it will, oh, God, his separation from Abram is his downfall. But I want to show you something. I think I'm going to close with this. I want to show you something in Genesis 18, 23 through 25. Listen to me good. That messed me up. Watch this, y'all. How this messed me up, man. Watch this. And hey, I'm, I, got, I'm, I got to close with this because it just messed me up. And Abraham drew near. Hallelujah to God. Let me back up. The men turned their faces for them and went to, oh, God, I praise you. Hallelujah to God. And how, oh, God, let's back up to verse number 20. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because they're seeing it. It's very grievous. I will go down now and see whether they're done all together according to the cry of y'all. Get ready for it now, which is coming to me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces then and went towards Sodom. But yet Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Abraham, Abraham drew near. And he said, listen, wilt thou destroy the righteous with the wicked? Right there. Tell your neighbor, right there. Hallelujah. He said, Paris venture. There be 50 righteous in the city. Will you destroy
Lord and not spare the place for 50, 50 righteous that are in. Be it far from thee to do after this manner. What is wrong with you? This is not your manner. This is not your character. You mean you're going to slay the righteous with the wicked that the righteous should be as the wicked be it far from thee. And now here Abraham, hallelujah, calls God on the carpet. He calls God on front street. He calls God out. He said, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Watch this, y'all. Little did Abraham know. Abraham didn't realize when he was in a season and he was in intercessory prayer. He didn't realize that in verse 23, before he even started calling out numbers, he didn't realize, hallelujah, that his prayers was already answered. He didn't realize, hallelujah, that the mind of the Lord was already in action. Ha, he didn't realize that in his prayer, when he drew near and he was praying and he said, will thou destroy the righteous with the wicked? Ha, it was a question, but yet it was a prayer. It was a prayer that Abraham said, I need answers to. Are you going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? And now Abraham say, man, if there's 50, will you destroy it? Hallelujah to God, be it far from thee. He said, shall not the earth judge of the earth do right? Hallelujah. I want to submit to you uh, that not only did the judge of the earth do right, that God's mind was already made up. He already answered Abraham's prayer. In verse 23, he said, hallelujah to God. Abraham didn't have to go down numbering people. Uh, hallelujah. He said, I just want to know, are you going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? And I want you to know it was that prayer that delivered Lot. Uh, it was that prayer. Hi, and then Abra God put Abraham put God on front street. He said, this ain't like you. Shall the judge of the earth do right? And hallelujah. And God said, I'll show you what right is. i show you, hallelujah, to God that I'm a righteous judge. How God, I praise you. I can't find 50. I can't find 40. I can't find 30. And I can't find 10. And I told you, Abraham, if I find 10, that I saved the city. But I tell you what, I'll show you how righteous of a judge of a God I am. I'll show you that I am a righteous judge. I tell you what, those that I find, if I find somebody there, if I find a righteous man there, I show you how righteous I am. Everything that's connected to him, whether they saved or not, whether they love me or not, whether they committed to me or not, if they are connected to a righteous man, I bring deliverance. I cause them to come out. He told them lot. The angel told lot everything that's connected to you. Go get it, because God is going to bring deliverance, not just to the righteous, but everything that is connected to the righteous. Hallelujah! Don't tell me the judge of the earth won't do right. Now that's right. Hallelujah. God said just because they connected to you, Lot, I'm going to bring them out. He said, Lot, go get everything belonging to you. Go get your son. I don't care whether they serve God or not. Go get your son. Hallelujah to God. Not only, listen here, Abraham, not only will I deliver the righteous, huh, but everything connected to the righteous, whether they are righteous or not. Hallelujah. His son-in-laws were not righteous, but if they would have believed lot, they could have been saved. Hallelujah. Don't tell me that the judge of the earth won't do right. He said, Abraham, now you tell me was that right? I burned the city down, but I saved the righteous and everything connected to the righteous also was saved. Don't tell me that I won't do right. Yes, sir. Woo! It was Abraham's prayer. It was Abraham's intercession. It was Abraham. Hallelujah to God. He said, are you going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? God had already made up in his mind. Can't destroy the righteous with the wicked. And then Abraham going to put him on front street. Shall not the judge of the earth do right? He said, I'll show you right. Everything.
man could now burn the city down. But uh, hallelujah that God, hallelujah that anybody I find righteous, and not just anybody I find righteous, anybody connected to that righteous man, I'll bring him out of the city. Now I want to submit something to y'all. If Lot had daughters that were virgins, don't that count as being righteous? I don't believe Lot was a righteous man and his wife wasn't righteous. So we got four people right there. I'm just going to tell you, I believe Lot's wife was, Lot, wife was righteous. I believe that the two daughters that didn't know a man in the midst of a perverse, hallelujah, Sodom and Gomorrah was perverse. But these girls didn't know a man. So they had to be righteous. Hallelujah. And he said, Lot, go get everything connected to you. Go get the cat. Go get the dog. Everything connected to you, Lot. And bring them out of this city. Because I'm going to burn the city down. But salvation is coming to your house. And everything connected to you, Lot. Go get your son. Go get your daughter. Go get your son. Everything that connected to you. And we, we know Lot didn't have any sons, but they told him, go get everything. God showed Abraham, not only do I know how to save the righteous, but I know how to deliver those that are connected to the righteous. So pastor, what does all this mean? Hallelujah to God. When your unrighteous daughter said, mommy, I got a raise and I don't know why. When they said, mommy, they fired everybody but me. Mommy, everybody in the car got hurt up some kind of way. I escaped. Uh, and I know I'm not righteous. Yes, but you are connected to somebody that is righteous. Don't tell me being right with God does not matter. Don't tell me upholding the hallelujah, the righteousness of God. Don't tell me it don't matter. Don't tell me it don't affect your daughter. It don't affect your unsaved loved one. Just your connection and being connected to them. God will bless them because of your connection. Well, we got to go. I hope and pray that y'all got something out of this word tonight. God's mind was made up. God, why, why, why Abraham is steady going through numbers. If you find 50, you find God had already mind up, had already made, and mind was made up. If I may, if I find anything righteous to them, I'm going to save them, but I'm going to burn that city down, but I'm saving them. Yes, sir. I'll show you that not only am I the judge of the earth, but I will do right. And you know how I'm going to do right? I'm going to show you, Abraham, that can't no God deliver like your God. <laughs> I am the God of deliverance. Oh, God, I praise your name. All right. Well, I hope and pray that you received something tonight. I hope and pray that the word of God was a blessing to you and that you would receive it in your spirit and that you can uh, go back and do more research and do more feasting on uh, the word of the Lord and see that it would be a blessing to you. And even if you were distracted tonight, that you would go back and listen to it over again without uh any distractions that's the only problem only thing wrong with uh internet and not being in person is that there's so many distractions so many distractions uh when you're on the computer so many uh, so many distractions all right listen hallelujah to god all right we got to go. We got to go. We'll be back at it in the morning at 6 o'clock. We'll be back in prayer at 6 o'clock. And I just appreciate all of you. And I hope you receive the word of God as a word from the Lord and as the mind of the Lord. And we'll be back in lot 
We'll be back, brother. Brother Brandon, we did get through several scriptures, man. We covered about three or four verses tonight, and so on. Next week, we'll get back in uh, back at the end of uh, Genesis 19, and we're gonna see how it how it uh, unfolded. And I tried to make the Word of God where you can receive it and apply it to your life right now and for today. All right, I gotta go. Listen, let's thank God. Let's give it up for Pastor Joyce. Let's bless God for her. We thank God for our leader tonight. All right, we got to go. Somebody asked a question. Is there any word from the Lord? I want you to know that, yeah, well, hold on. Hallelujah. Let me ask you this. If anybody want to give an offering tonight, you can. Uh, uh, if you want to give, if you were not there Sunday and you were not able to give for Pastoral Sunday, the cash app symbol, Pastor Joyce is already have it up. If you want to be a blessing to the church, the cash app symbol is already up. You can be a blessing to the house of God. If the word of God bless you and you want to plant a seed tonight, you can plant a seed tonight. All right, we're getting ready to go. Somebody asked the question, is any word from the Lord? I want you to know that yes, there is a word from the Lord. Until then, we will see you in the morning at six o'clock for the conclusion of the whole matter. Be blessed of the Lord.